Hi guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have a perfumers portfolio video and this is somebody uh, that I want to highlight and I think deserves a lot of respect. Um, and today we're going to highlight Jean Carlillo, who was the famous, world famous in-house perfumer uh, of the house of Jean Patou from the 1960s until 1998 or so is when they say he retired. Um, now, I'm going to take some liberty with some of this because some of these fragrances are actually not credited to Jean Carlillo, but through some research and through some, I'm going to say creativity on my part and some, you know, I'm, I'm making some educated guesses on some of this. He deserves to get credit. Now, um, a couple things that I want to talk about as far as this series goes, and, you know, what I want to say about this is that one of the reasons that, well, one of the reasons I started this channel, not just this series, is I wanted people to kind of share in, you know, obviously my love and, and knowledge of perfume, and, and one of the things that really started to bother me as my knowledge of perfume grew over the years is if you ask somebody, like, um, you know, if you ask somebody who made, who makes Tom Ford's fragrances, 90, 90 plus percent of people are going to say Tom Ford. Tom Ford is the genius who created that. His name's on the bottle. It's obviously a Tom Ford. They don't realize that there is a perfumer, a man, a woman who put their blood, sweat, and tears into that bottle, into that creation. Um, and many a times, and, and, and in fact, Frederick Mall has been credited with, um, you know, saying that um, uh, when I believe it was uh, Jean-Louis Suizac did not get credit for opium, or maybe it was um, uh, maybe it was Poison, the release of uh, Poison in uh, the 1980s, when Edward Fleischer did not get credit for Poison, that that really made him so angry that, uh, you know, Dior had a release and they didn't even talk about the guy that created the fragrance, um, that it forced him to, you know, or it pushed him to create his own brand in Frederick Mall, where the perfumer's name is written right there on the bottle and on the box, and there's a biography of the perfumer and all that stuff. So, um, I say all that just to say that, um, you know, this is a series that, um, you know, I, I want to give credit to these people who, uh, are to me kind of like rock stars, icons in the industry, you know, for what they created. And, um, you know, the, in Jean Carlillo's creativity, especially, I think he's one of the greatest perfumers of all time. I know that's a big uh, statement. And there's not a whole lot of fragrances I'm going to show you. I'm only, I'm only going to show you a handful, but some of these fragrances to me are some of the best fragrances uh, in fragrance history. Um, but before we do that, we're going to do the usual scent of the day, um, and this is a fragrance that I've talked about before, and actually a fragrance that made one of my perfumers portfolio videos, because this is an Anique Minardo fragrance, and this is called Potion by D Squared. This came out a decade ago, 2011 this came out. Let me do a fresh spray because it's my scent of the day, like I said. The sprayer on this is amazing. Um, and this is a, it used to be a cheapie, now it's getting more and more expensive, um, but I love this fragrance because it mixes a couple, um, ingredients that just go so well together. She's so good at creating this, you know, resinous, ambery aura. Anique Minardo is amazing at that, and they've mixed Angelica and Thyme and Mint, um, with, um, with a couple floral notes, Gen, gen, uh, gentiana, gentiana, and rose. I don't know what gentiana is, um, and, but it's it's obviously a flower. Uh, there are other fragrances that have that note in it, but I've never come across it in any, in any other fragrance in my collection. Um, so this is a little bit of a unique composition for me, um, and it's 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 so it's so lovely. This amberiness with that angelica, it almost reminded me a little bit uh, for just a split second of um, um, Creed's Royal Oud because of that angelica that you get in the opening, but it quickly goes into this more resinous, cinnamony, you know, she's very good at that cinnamon resinous uh, fragrance category. 
and she just knocked it out of the park here. So I'm very glad to have a bottle of this. It's getting harder and harder to find. I think maybe Le Parfume has a couple bottles. Um, it, and it's a beautiful bottle too. Look at the ridges. It's almost like the Celine bottle. Um, not as not as fancy because of the, you know, the front is a little bit more tacky with these little plaques. Um, but they did engrave um, D squared on the back with the year that D squared was founded, 1964. Uh, the glass isn't top quality glass. There's some, um, you know, there's some disfigurements in the glass. You can't, maybe you won't be able to see it on camera, but um, there, there you go. You can see that line right there in the glass. So it's not the best quality glass, but so what? This is just a cheap little designer fragrance. No one wanted it. It got discontinued. And, um, you know, Anique Minardo in, in the cheapy category strikes again. This is amazing stuff. It does have this cashmere feel, uh, this, you know, a little bit of synthetic musk feel in the base. But for just an easy, breezy, beautiful fragrance to wear, I love wearing this stuff in the winter. Um, there's even a little bit of freshness from that mint and thyme and pepper. I feel like you might be able to get away with wearing this in the warmer weather. Not 100 degree heat, but uh, 70, 80, I would think this would still work. Um, Anique Minardo, the great Anique Minardo, as she is um, known in the industry. So this is my scent of the day. And before we get into the Jean Carlio fragrances, I want to talk about an error that somebody brought to my attention. And that is um, that Fragrantica has Jean Carlio listed as the perfumer for a fragrance that apparently he is not the perfumer. Um, and the fragrance that he is listed as the perfumer of that he's not is this, Estee Lauder Knowing which I wore recently and brought up in one of my videos. Um, Fragrantica lists him as the perfumer of knowing. Apparently, that's not true. Um, the perfumer of knowing, according to Parfumo.net, is Ellie Roger, who Ellie Roger made some other things that um, he made, for example, Hohang Club, which I have a bottle of from Balenciaga. That's a 1987 release, so maybe I'll mention him and give knowing a shout out because it definitely deserves it. But this is not a Jean Carlio like Fragrantica says. Fragrantica is known to be wrong from time to time, believe it or not. And um, so just something to um, to keep in mind. If you're looking up the great Jean Carlio, um, knowing is not one of his creations. Okay, so now let's go on to some of the things that he has done. Before we talk about some of the fragrances that are credited to him, um, I want to mention something that he did not create because it came out in 1935, but he was the in-house perfumer for, you know, three, almost four decades, um, while this fragrance was being, you know, reformulated and he kept it in beautiful shape, almost like Thierry Vassar has kept some of the Guerlain creations in beautiful shape, like Shalimar, Mitsuko, Valde Nuit. This is joy. So he didn't create Joy. Joy was created by uh, a, a perfumer called Henry, Henry Almarez. And uh, this is this amazing aldehydic floral. So I bought this because if you take a look at the bottom, you'll see that there's only a couple ingredients listed. I don't know if you can see that. Um, so this is one that just basically says... Alcohol, parfum. That's pretty much it. Alcohol and parfum. Um, so that's it. SD alcohol 39-C and fragrance. And, and so anytime you get this short list of ingredients before the big long list started coming out, you know you have an older bottle. And this came from Enchante Perfumes. Thank you, Anuj. If you've been watching my channel, you know um, Anuj. This is a little um, pure perfume that is uh, seven and a half mil so it's not a lot of juice it's almost like Roja's discovery atomizer seven and a half mil um but this is supposed to be like a recharge thing but my god this is one of the most amazing animalic indolic floral fragrances i think i've ever smelled i will tell you it instantly reminded me of one fragrance that i own and love and that is this amouage gold man 
Um, and Jean, Car Jean Carleo deserves a lot of credit for keeping this in the condition that he has kept it in while he was there. Again, this is a late 90s bottle, if I'm not mistaken. Late 90s, early 2000s. And this came out in 1935. This is like Jean pa uh, Patou's version of an aldehydic floral. But this is so, to me, this is so much more interesting and wearable than, let's say, Chanel number no. 5. Um, this has this beautiful aldehydes and this, um, you get this fruitiness from this green peach type feel. Um, it's got rose, it's got tuberose, it's got ylang ylang. Um, it has jasmine, lily of the valley, orchid, more rose. It has orris root, it's a little bit powdery. I could have mentioned this on my orris video, but I didn't. Um, and then it's got musk, sandalwood, and civet. So, you know, what I like about this is it keeps my attention. It keeps my nose kind of guessing. It keeps me off balance. You know, I've never, I've never given this a full wear, but I've worn it to bed a couple times, as you can see. And, um, that indolic floral, you know, even if you did not like florals, I would urge you to try this. I've heard Persolais describe it as almost like rubbing your hand across a brand new carpet, a plush carpet, and you just feel the ridges in the carpet go on and on and on, you know, like it just goes on forever. And I get what he means because there is some serious texture in this perfume. And so even though Jean Carlio did not create this, keeping it in this shape um, through the reformulations is uh, very noteworthy. And I'm very glad to have a bottle, even if it's only a seven and a half mil, just for, you know, discovery purposes and, and getting to know fragrances. This blew me away. I'd love to have 10 more of these. I'd, I'd love to make sure the fragrance armory is well stocked, let's say. Uh, but needless to say, even though it's not his creation, it deserves a um, it deserves a shout out. And if you like fragrances, if this sounds appealing to you, I would highly urge you to get your nose on uh, Gold Man. Now this is a magnetic cap version, but it's still old enough where the name was written on the collar right there. I know it's probably a little bit hard to see, but you can see gold right there. The newer ones actually say it here, I believe. Um, the sides are kind of like decked out in gold. It's a beautiful presentation. Uh, apparently this is uh, Putin's signature scent. Um, if you just imagine uh, the Kremlin just reeking of gold, of, of gold, of vintage gold, man. This is a power scent for sure, uh, but... I bring this up because it's probably the closest comparison to Joy that I can think of. Um, and, and, I, and I love them both, but you have to be in the right mood to wear these. Okay, now I want to talk about something that I've kind of took some liberty with. Um, again, he's not listed as the perfumer on these two. Uh, but I did find an article in Fragrantica. And um, I'll just read you a little bit of that article. So um, this is talking about the brand Lacoste, okay? And if you don't know, Jean Carlio made the first Lacoste fragrance. It was called Eau de Sport. And it, it, it had the Lacoste alligator on it. Uh, but down in the bottom left-hand side of the bottle, it said Jean Patou Paris, okay? So they didn't even... It wasn't like they were trying to hide it. It was just... You know, it was almost like Lacoste was the sports arm of the House of Patou. Uh, and so uh, a couple fragrances that he released. Well, here, let me read you what um, a bit of the article. It says, uh, in the case of Lacoste, the opinion is true since 2001 when Procter & Gamble acquired the Lacoste fragrance license and then sold it to Cody in 2015 as part of a $12.5 billion deal that included 43 perfumery and cosmetic brands. Um, until 2001, the brand launched very worthy aromas of classical uh, cut. And it says that uh, Land was released in 1991. That's coming up when Jean Patou owned the Lacoste fragrance license. One of those infrequent cases when the perfume house, which has its own perfumer, releases a fragrance for another brand. It would have been strange if Guerlain had purchased the Worth licenses in the 1930s, and Jacques Guerlain had made fragrances for both brands while some other examples do exist. 
land was created by the legendary perfumer Jean Carlio, who came to Jean, uh, who came to Jean Patou in the 1960s and worked there until 1998. In 67 to 68, he created the first Lacoste fragrances named Lacoste and Eau de Sport Lacoste under the Jean Patou brand name first. Later, he created Lacoste Original, which is this, uh, and Booster Lacoste in 1996. It seems like Lacoste was a sports division of Jean Patou to create sport fragrances for tennis, golf, and other sports fans. Okay, so what's interesting is, you know, they linked Jean Carlio's name as the legendary perfumer. But if you actually click on him, these fragrances, Lacoste um, Original, as it's called, in 1984, and Lacoste Land, which comes in this beautiful leather pouch that buttons here, and you uh, un unveil the fragrance like so. There's Land, okay? This is a splash, by the way. Um... I just, I just sprayed this the other night, so I know what it smells like. I'm not going to open it up. Um, but, uh, so in this article, um, it says that Land was released in 1991 when Jean Patou owned the Lacoste fragrance licenses, okay? Um, but they don't give Jean, uh, they don't give Jean Carlio credit for these two fragrances, which is very interesting to me. It's not listed as him being credited as the perfumer, um in Fragrantica, and it's also not listed as him being credited as the perfumer in Parfumo, for example, but I'm going to go ahead and say that he was the perfumer. He was the in-house perfumer of the company that owned these brands when they were created, um, and so I'm guessing that he had a big hand in it. If he wasn't the only one that worked on it, his nose probably had a lot to do with these scents, um, and this is currently, by the way, I should mention something. This bottle, if you go look for it right now with the built-in sprayer, is a cheapie. It's a cheapie because if you look on the bottom, it actually will say Procter & Gamble distributor. Do not get the Procter & Gamble distributor or the Coty, I should say. Procter & Gamble or Coty distributor. Look at the distributor on my vintage bottle. S-O-F-I-P-A-R, sofa par. That's what you want. If you can find yourself a sofa par bottle, you will get one that has this beautiful green freshness, almost like country club fresh, like you are going to play golf. If I was going to golf, and I'm not a golfer um, at all, uh, you know, I, the, the most golf that I've ever done in my life is, uh, let's say, top golf. But, um, you know, if you were going to go to a country club and go golf amongst some other rich guys, played nine holes, 18 holes. This is what I would wear. It has this really zingy greenness from the 80s. Um, this this bergamot, lime, clary sage, lavender thing mixed with some green notes like basil, maybe artemisia, uh, galbanum even. And then there's this old school carnation with oak moss, which that's one of Jean Carlio's signature. One of the reasons that his fragrances are so sought after, as we'll talk about later on, uh, is he used huge doses of real oak moss and real Mysore sandalwood. Th that was like his signature. You know, the two parallel lines that ran through his fragrances many a time. So this has that big slug of real oak moss, and it really shows through. Um, there's also a beautiful vetiver note. There's a little bit of sweetness from this uh, musk in Tonka. And... Um, you know, this is a this is a very fresh summertime fragrance, but very elegant. It's not like, you know, it's not like a cheap, freshy, you know, it smells very different from what you're going to get on the market today, especially if you can find this old vintage bottle. Um, if you can find the vintage, it's worth hunting down. If not, don't worry about it. Now, as far as land goes... <sighs> Land is also meant to kind of be an outdoor type of release, obviously. Um, it's made up of mandarin orange, uh, guinea orange, which I'm not sure what the differences are, and grapefruit. So that's three, you know, mandarin orange, guinea orange, and grapefruit. Um, with lavender, narrowly, galbanum, petit gras, and then there's this bourbon vetiver with oak moss absolute. Again, there's the big dose of oak moss. 
nutmeg, juniper, cumarin, lavage, rose, amber, musky notes, sage, and benzoin. Now, there is one note that's missing from this, and if I had to compare this to one fragrance, it would be Eau de Hermes from 1951, which is my favorite fragrance of my favorite perfumer. If you said, what's your favorite Edmund Rudnitska perfumer, perfume Ramsey go, it would be Eau de Hermes, number one, and then Rochus Femme, number two. Um, and this is very close to Eau de Hermes to me. Uh, I'm a little shocked there's not a cumin note, actually. What's interesting is um, my Eau de Hermes, even though it has that real, real spicy cumin, um, I could still wear it in a little bit of heat. It doesn't have to be cold to wear Eau de Hermes, believe it or not. It is a citrusy, spicy fragrance, and so is this, except for this adds this big extra dose of greenness. Um, it keeps the spiciness. I don't think that the spiciness is as well done as my vintage Eau de Hermes, um, but this is, if you like spicy scents, um, and you want something made by the master, I'm going to say this is made by Jean Carlio, even though it's not listed as him being the perfumer, I'm taking that liberty. Um, and this was also marketed by Sofa Par, uh, just like the Lacoste bottle that I have. And so Lacoste Land, um, really interesting presentation too, almost like the pouch of an outdoorsman, you know, um, and so this is one that nobody talks about, but I think they deserve credit for it. I think they were maybe a little bit torn on, um, you know, creating something that was an outdoor scent and creating something that had some um, depth and exclusivity to it. You know, this also has a note of mace, uh, according to um, Fragrantica. Uh, and it's compared to fragrances like, uh, Tom Ford's London, which I don't really get the comparison there. Um, it's compared to Sagamore by Lancome, which I've never done a comparison, so I can't speak to that. But this is a lovely fragrance for somebody that likes vintage things, wants to kind of go back to those bold, strong days. This was made for a man. Um, and it was made, you know, even though it was the 90s, it was before the freshy wave. And it was before kind of the unisex wave started to, um, um, you know, started to come through. And the quality of ingredients here is unbelievable. You would not think that um, this is a Lacoste fragrance. You know, it's the pieces come together almost like they're being pulled by a magnet, you know, and they all make this beautiful composition. So, um, you know, it's, 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 it's another one of these... Uh, examples of these old fragrances that just have so much more to offer than what you would ever expect. So Lacoste Land is one dimension. Uh, and then we're going to get into some of my all-time favorites. And before we go to the house of, of Jean Patou, uh, I'm going to show you one from a, from a brand called Yoji Yamamoto. Now, this is another one where there's some controversy because this was released in 1999, okay? One year after Jean Carlio retired from the house of Jean Patou. And right before the house of Jean Patou got purchased by Procter & Gamble. Um, and if you actually look, I have, a, I have a bottle that's a year or two newer of this 1999 version. If you go to Fragrantica and look up Yoji Ohm, uh, there's the Yoji right there, Yoji Ohm. Click on the 1999 version. The new version sucks. Don't get the new version. Uh, but if you can find a bottle of this 1999 version, there, there's usually like a clasp here that keeps it from spraying. This one broke off. My newer bottle has it. But I brought this one because I wanted to see if you could see the Jean Patou verbiage on the bottom of the bottle. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Come on, baby. It's right, it's right there. It says Jean Patou, Inc. in very small letters. Um, so here's my thought on this. This, fra this fragrance by Luca Turin was given five stars, okay? But for this version, the, not the newer one. The newer one sucks. 
Don't forget that. Don't get the newer one. You'll be disappointed. Um, so this, this is a um, Japanese brand, obviously, Yoji Yamamoto. And the perfumer in Fragrantica and Parfumo, and the one that got all the interviews in the press is a guy named Jean-Michael Duriez, which I have nothing else from him, only this one. Okay, so him and him and Jean Carlio are tied at the hip because they obviously worked together at Jean Patou uh, before Jean Carlio retired. Okay. Now, this for its time was an absolute revelation and masterpiece. And there is no way that you're gonna convince me that. This came out in 1999. John Carlio retired a year earlier, and that Jean Michael Dury has created this all on his own. Now, the other thing I should mention is the woman's version that came out in 1996 of Yoji Yamamoto is credited to Jean Carlio, to Jean Carlio. And so he was obviously working on these fragrances right before he retired. Um, now, there's many instances where uh, either for political reasons or contractual reasons, a perfumer doesn't get credit, okay? Uh, and Pierre Bourdon talked about that when he did his perfume for Frederick Mall. He said that um, Jean-Claude Elena made that entire perfume, but then he got under contract with Hermes, and, you know, as far as uh, French Lover goes, he couldn't have his name on the bottle. So Pierre Bourdon came in, he made a couple tweaks, and bam, Maul put his name on the bottle, and you know, but it wasn't his perfume. He just kind of did the finishing touches. That's what I think Jean Michael Duriez did with this. I think that this is a Jean Carlio composition. That's my that's my take. And this is one of my favorites. The next two are are up there. There's no one, two, three spot, just all number ones for me. This is a this is backup bottle worthy. I have a backup bottle. Um and it is an amazing composition. If you like fragrances like uh, Be Men from uh, Thierry Mugler, this is one that if you can find, if you're a vintage hunter like me, check this out. This is an amazing composition. Uh, it's a nice and lavender and coriander and bergamot in the top. The licorice in this is maybe my favorite licorice note in all of perfumery. Uh, it's got cinnamon, Brazilian rosewood, carnation, and geranium. And then the base has rum, coffee, cedar, leather, sandalwood, and tonka bean. Now, with that note breakdown, you would think that this is a monster. This is a cold weather fragrance. This is, you know, this is going to be a beast. Rum, licorice, cinnamon, coffee, cedar, leather, tonka, sandalwood. It's not. Uh, the thing about it is Yoji Yamamoto is a Japanese brand. The Japanese like very effervescent and airy scents. They don't like heavy scents, okay? Speaking of heavy, D squared potion is smelling amazing right now. Um, but Yoji Yamamoto, uh, as a designer for J Japan, Japanese scents, they don't like heavy scents, so they created this very heavy fragrance on its on the note breakdown. But they found a way to make it airy and light. This is not a beast as far as projection and longevity goes. This wears like a second skin. But it's absolutely beautiful. I'll wear this all. This is a perfect signature scent because it's unique. It's different. It keeps your interest as a frag head. Uh, at the time, there was nothing that smelled like this. Is five years before B Men. B Men's the closest thing I can think of. That came out in two thousand four, um, and I think Christine Nagel, the uh, current Hermes in-house perfumer, worked on B Men. So you can see an idea that Jean Carlio created uh, at the turn of the century was a very unique composition. Um, one of my favorite coffee scents, um, you know, as far as liqueur goes and licorice, there's rum. It's just so, but the lavender and the anise make it so wearable in the warmer weather. I love this scent. I absolutely love this. I, this is a 100 ml bottle. I have a backup 50 ml that I got from Anouj from Enchante. And uh, as long as you're going to get the 1999 version, if it has a black cap on it, don't get it. If it has a different looking bottle than this, don't get it. Um, so that's my, that's my story on Yoji Home from 1999. Um, and and I'm giving this credit to Jean Carlio because I am probably I'm 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 99% sure he worked on this and he created this and 
and Michael uh, Jean Michael Duriez ha is getting credit for it, which that's how it goes in the perfume industry sometimes. But when you're trying to give people credit, like me, this perfumer's portfolio video is all about giving credit to the men and women who worked on these fragrances that we know and love. And that's why I'm taking some leeway with giving credit to Jean Carlio here. So if anyone has a real story on this or proof, I would I would love to know. Um, okay, and then two that he is credited for, and I like them both equally, which might surprise some people, but uh, the last two, I'm not going to say it's number one and number two. They're both just top of the mountain for me. Um, number one is a women's fragrance. This is the EDP concentration of Ma Liberté. Look at the juice color. Look at the bottle. It's got the Jean Patou logo on the back. Absolutely glorious presentation. Uh, I love this presentation of these older bottles. Oh, uh, and this, you you if you want a thick fragrance, um, this is much thicker than Yoji Home. And look at the, I mean, just look at the color of the juice, that that amber bronze color. Um, Ma Liberté was also released in an EDT concentration. This came out in 1987, by the way, and Jean Carlio is the credited perfumer. Um, this is one of the most amazing lavender heliotrope, um, clove. There has to be Mysore sandalwood in this. Um, actually, what's interesting about this fragrance is this is supposed to be like the precursor to Patau Porom Privé. Not Patau Porom, but Patau Porom Privé, which is a different scent altogether. And this is the reason that I don't own that fragrance. I actually have a 1ml sample of Patau Porom Privé that I plan on doing a comparison video. I don't want to waste that 1ml sample. Patau Porom and Patau Porom Privé go for $1,000 on eBay for 100ml. You know, it's it's ridiculous prices, right? Um, this one, I got this for under 100 about 18 months ago, I want to say, maybe 20 months ago. Um, so they still can be had. People don't know about this. This is a hidden gem, but it is discontinued. So the bottle supply is, you know, constantly dwindling as people like us know about it. I would love to have a backup of this. I think this is a, I think this is a masterpiece, just like I think the next one's a masterpiece. Um, the patchouli in this, the nutmeg, the... The sandalwood, this smells like it has real Mysore sandalwood. I don't know if it does, but it smells like it does. You could fool me. Um, and, I mean, the cinnamon, it's so, it's so comforting, this fragrance. And to think this was a women's scent, there's a lot of masculine features in this. There's lavender, like I said. Um, there is some floralness from the heliotrope and jasmine and rose, but then you get down... There's also a little bit of vanilla, but it's not sweet. It's not a modern sweet vanilla. Don't don't think modern vanilla. This is, um, you know, the, the sweetness of the vanilla is just a touch. You know, if you could just dial up the tab, just a hair on the sweetness, that's what you get. Just enough to give it some sweetness without being completely devoid of any sweetness at all. Um... But the spiciness of nutmeg and patchouli and sandalwood and cedar, cinnamon, there's vetiver in this too. Very masculine notes. Um, so I, I think that this is, I think this is one of, if not his greatest masterpieces. Um, it's so good. It, it's just, it's so spicy and and. You know, um, I've actually gotten a compliment wearing this, believe it or not. Just like Rich Mitch said he got a compliment wearing Opium Secret de Parfum. I got a compliment wearing Ma Liberté. Again, women's fragrances. Uh, do not overlook these just because you're a guy. And, you know, the price... I'm going to show you the next one real quick, just so I can make a point. So the next one is one everyone knows. Patau Porom. This is the EDT. Uh, this is a tester bottle that I found. Um... The notes are right there, written in French, but there's the notes. I'll go through them in just a second. But I just want to make a point. Uh, this is $1,000 for 100 ml. 
right now. This bottle, if it was full on eBay, will go for $1,000, which is insane. Um, it is very good, though. Very, very special occasion fragrance for me. Um, this is $100 on eBay, or around $100, let's say. Um, so the price of the women's fragrances of the past that are discontinued, this came out in 1980, I want to say, this came out in 87, but they're both discontinued. The price of the men's fragrances, because of people like us who realize the quality, this is, look at the back again. Do you see that? Santal de Mysore, that is real Mysore sandalwood in this bottle. Impossible to find now. You could, you could go throw $1,000 at Roja Dove. He won't give you real Mysore sandalwood because he can't. You know, it's, it's, it's limited by the Indian government. Um, because of, of, you know, it's heavy use and, and being farmed basically to extinction. Uh, they, they have put down some serious controls on, on Mysore sandalwood. Um, so the price of this has skyrocketed. But the price of the women's fragrances have not followed suit. I talked about um, Teatra Alla Scala on my channel. And some people bought that and reported back that they absolutely love that fragrance. And so do I. And I wish I would have bought two bottles before I told you bastards about it. But um, I didn't. And I got one bottle. But I'm happy to have it. And just like I'm happy to have one bottle of this. Um, and, you know, it is... Um, it's it's a little bit telling just because of, I think, the gender and perfume that these haven't skyrocketed in price like this has. The one that's closest to this, Patau Pro and Privé, for men, has skyrocketed in price. That one is uh, almost a thousand. If this is a thousand, Patau Pro and Privé is like 800, you know, or 750 or something. It's gone up. Not as much as the original Patau Pro Homme, but damn close, right? But But this hasn't yet. So there's a little bit of an arbitrage situation here if you're if you're sly and savvy and you can get past the fact that this came out for women. Um, it's so good. I I honestly think that um, that uh, John Carlio is a is a genius and one of the great greatest perfumers of all time. These these prove it to me. Um, here, let me read you the notes of the original Patau Perome. So you have. Uh, vetiver bourbon, which is bourbon vetiver. You have Cedre de Virginie, which I'm guessing is Virginia cedar. Uh, Santal de Mysore, Mysore sandalwood. Um, Poivre de Malabar, I think that's Malabar pepper. Uh, Sauge Sclarly, uh, I guess that's Clary, Clary Sage. And Pimente, I'm guessing that's Pimento. Um, so there you have it. That's the real note breakdown of Patau Porome. If you look on Fragrantica, by the way, it's completely different. I don't think that is the note breakdown that, that Fra Fragrantica shows. Um, let's see what Fragrantica shows. Fragrantica says, Clary Sage, Basil, Lavender, Black Pepper, Tarragon, Pimento Seeds, Patchouli, Vetiver, Geranium, Fir, Cedar, Leather, Civet, Vanilla, Tonka, Sandalwood, Labdanum. I think this is much more proper of a note breakdown. Obviously, it's listed on the bottle. That's what you're going to trust. But, um, you know, the note breakdown on Fragrantica, I don't think is true. I never thought it was true. I never got civet from this. If I did, it was very minimal, maybe because I knew that Fragrantica said it when I wore it. Um, this is a all-year-round... You know, if you could just have bottles of this, I, you, this could be a signature scent, hands down, for the rest of your life. Um, it's almost like Dar it's almost like Darby to me in a way, Guerlain's Darby, where it has these notes, and you would think it's going to kind of wear heavy on you, but it doesn't. It wears so so light, perfect projection and longevity. You know, perfect sillage. Um, it, it, it lifts you up as well as, um, you know, you, you, you realize the amazing things of what you're smelling and look at that five, uh, six note breakdown and that's it. That's the only six notes listed. Uh, and you're talking about one of the greatest masculines of all time because it's the quality of ingredients and Jean Cartlio, I think knew how to mix 
classic French style with high quality ingredients. And I think that's going to be his calling card. These old bottles with the Mysore sandalwood, you know, with the big doses of oak moss, with um, the amazing composition of licorice and rum and all this different stuff no one was doing back then. Uh, and then keeping some of the older uh, Jean Patou fragrances in tip-top shape. Uh, and then his work at Lacoste, which no one credits him for. Th that's really his... Um, that's really what he should be remembered for. So, uh, Jean Carlio, cheers to you, my friend. I know there's others I don't have from him, by the way. Um, there's a lot of other... Uh, I don't have 1000. I don't have Sublime. I don't have Voyager. Uh, I don't have Lacoste Booster. I don't have uh, Eau de Patou from 1976. So, there's a lot of other fragrances that he has done. I don't know if you have experience with them. Please let me know in the comments. Um, and I really appreciate you guys watching and supporting me. Uh, seriously, I have the best uh, 476 subs that a guy starting out could ask for. So, cheers. I'll see you again tomorrow with another fragrance video. Bye-bye.